In this video series, I'm sharing five key insights from my new book, Humanocracy, co-authored with Michele Zanini. Insight number three, to bust bureaucracy, start with new principles. The moment we stop taking bureaucracy for granted, the moment we see it for what it is, an unconscionable and unnecessary tax on human initiative and imagination, we can't help but be moved to act. But where does one start? Unfortunately, there's no blueprint for building a humanocracy, no Lego-like manual with brick-by-brick -brick instructions. Benchmarking progressive organizations like Hire and Nucor and Birdsorg is helpful, but will only take you so far. We need to go deeper, back to first principles. Truly novel problems like building human-centric organizations can't be solved with old principles. In the 18th century, the champions of self-government had to challenge the divine right of kings and create an entirely new set of pro-democracy principles, such as universal suffrage, freedom of the press, religious liberty, and equality before the law. Similarly, in their quest to map the subatomic world, physicists, such as Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg, had to abandon the comfortable certainties of Newtonian physics and ferret out an entirely new set of principles, like particle wave duality, superposition, indeterminacy, and non-local correlation. Thus was born quantum mechanics. The managerial obsession with practices and processes is understandable. Corporate processes like planning, budgeting, and performance reviews are pivotal in determining whose ideas prevail, what projects get funded, and how rewards get distributed. Yet, if we remain in the domain of management practices, our organizations will never be fundamentally more capable than they are right now. Minor tweaks aren't enough. They're like putting a tutu on a dog. The new attire may be fetching, but it won't make Fido a ballerina. 100 years ago, the challenge was to make human beings as reliable as the machines they served. The goal was to maximize conformance. That led early management pioneers to emphasize principles like stratification, standardization, specialization, formalization, and routinization. The goal of humanocracy is to maximize contribution, not control. So what sort of principles do you need to start with if you want to build an organization that inspires people to give their very best? Our research suggests seven principles are key. While we devote a chapter to each one in the book, I'm going to take a moment now to summarize each of the seven. The first principle is ownership. By this point in life, you've probably learned that there's a wonderful sense of accomplishment that comes when you pour yourself into building something that feels like it's yours. That's why, if given the chance, most of us would rather be owners than employees. Not everyone can work in a startup. But as companies like Hire demonstrate, it's possible to build organizations where every team member has the autonomy and the financial upside to help them feel and act like an owner. This is critical to unlocking entrepreneurial energy and creating an organization that can outrun the future. The second principle is meritocracy. All of us want the chance to develop our skills and to be recognized for our contributions. We want to work in organizations where you get ahead by adding value, not by sucking up. We need organizations where influence correlates with competence and where compensation correlates with actual value added and where decisions are untainted by power politics and personal biases. The third principle is markets. In a market economy, consumers have lots of choices and that's a good thing. Markets are much better at aligning needs and resources than centrally planned economies. It's a problem then that so many businesses operate like a command economy where a small number of people at the top make most of the big decisions. This needs to change. We need organizations that harness the distributed intelligence and flexibility of markets. The fourth principle is community. All of us crave genuine community and the emotional strength and resilience that comes from being known and accepted for who we are. That's why our organizations need to foster deep, trust-based relationships. Because when we feel safe and accepted, we do our best work. Our colleagues need to feel like family, not just co-workers. The fifth principle is openness. 
While tight-knit communities are emotionally important, we also love being in environments that encourage curiosity, learning, and candor. All of us want to work in organizations that are receptive to new ideas, wherever they come from. All of us want to be free to learn, grow, and invent. That means building an organization that is open to brilliant ideas wherever they come from. The sixth principle is experimentation. There's something deeply satisfying about using your ingenuity to solve a new problem, to come up with a new idea, test it, perfect it, and then put it to work. Experimentation is also fundamental to business success. It's the way an organization stakes out the future, reinvents itself, and outperforms the average. The seventh and last principle is paradox. Companies like Hire and Nucor, which we feature in our book, have learned how to reconcile conflicting goals like scale and agility, innovation and efficiency, and freedom and discipline. Bureaucratic structures aren't very good at transcending trade-offs. Often, the pendulum swings erratically between extremes. Getting better at paradox means localizing key trade-offs, giving frontline team members the information and skills they need to make smart, real-time trade-offs as the situation demands. Obviously, these principles aren't much use if they aren't put into practice, so they need to be embedded in management systems and processes. In most organizations, there are all sorts of processes. We have processes for setting direction, developing plans, defining goals, allocating resources, coordinating activities, optimizing workflows, creating new products and solutions, acquiring and upgrading talent, assessing performance, doling out rewards, mitigating risk, improving operations. The way these processes are constructed and implemented has a huge effect on organizational performance. They communicate to people what's important and what's not. They emphasize certain priorities and values over others. They determine whose voices get heard and whose opinions matter. They shape how decisions get made, how work gets done, and what behaviors get rewarded, and most importantly, who gets ahead. Uninstalling bureaucracy and building something better means rebuilding our management structures and systems around new human-centric principles. We need to inject new DNA into the management genome.